Have you ever pondered over what the end of time might look like? It's a question that has intrigued humanity for centuries, sparking countless theories and beliefs, from the fiery apocalypse depicted in ancient scriptures, to the more modern interpretations of a world consumed by its own technological advancement. The concept of the end of time is as diverse as it is fascinating. One belief that has stood the test of time is the second coming of Jesus Christ. It's a concept deeply rooted in Christian theology, a promise of hope and redemption amidst chaos and despair. Yet it's shrouded in mystery, filled with signs and symbols that have baffled scholars and believers alike. What does the second coming truly mean? How would we recognize it and more importantly, how should we prepare for it? These are questions that demand contemplation and understanding. So, let's journey together to understand the signs and prepare ourselves for the second coming of Jesus. The signs of the end times are not a mystery, they are documented in the Holy Scriptures. As we navigate through the corridors of time, it's essential to understand the signs foretold in the Bible. One of these signs is the surge of lawlessness. The world around us seems to be spiraling into chaos with crime and corruption becoming more prevalent. It's as if we're witnessing the prophecy unfold where it was said in Matthew 24 12 that, because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. And speaking of love growing cold, we observe a chilling trend of indifference and hostility replacing compassion and kindness. Relationships seem more strained, communities more divided, and empathy seems to be on the decline. This too was predicted as a sign of the end times. Next, we find the rise of false prophets. It's no secret that there are many self-proclaimed prophets who claim to speak the word of God, yet their actions and teachings contradict the teachings of Jesus Christ. The Bible warns us of these false prophets in Matthew 24, 24 saying, For false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform great signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Lastly, let's talk about the gospel being preached to the whole world. With the help of modern technology, the word of God is reaching corners of the world that were unreachable before. This global spread of the gospel is a clear sign as mentioned in Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. These signs are not meant to incite fear, but to awaken us to the reality of the approaching end time. They're divine markers on the sands of time, reminding us to be vigilant and steadfast in our faith. As we journey forward, let's keep these signs in mind, not as omens of doom, but as reminders of our purpose and the promise of the second coming. Amidst the chaos and confusion, a beacon of hope emerges, the second coming of Jesus Christ. This is not a tale spun from the threads of fantasy, but a promise etched into the pages of the Bible, the sacred text revered by millions across the globe. The concept of the second coming or parousia, as it's known in Greek, is an integral part of Christian eschatology. It speaks of a time when Jesus Christ will return to earth, not as a humble carpenter, but as a triumphant king. A king who will reign with justice, banish evil, and restore peace. The second coming is not merely a single event, but a series of occurrences, leading to the ultimate revelation. It's a time when the dead in Christ will rise first, followed by those who are alive and believe in him. Together they will meet the Lord in the air, in an event known as the rapture. But this is not a story of fear or despair. No, far from it. It's a story of hope, redemption, and the promise of eternal life. It's a testament to God's unending love for humanity and his desire to reunite with his children. As we navigate the stormy seas of life, the second coming serves as our lighthouse, guiding us back to the safe shores of divine love and grace. It's a reminder that no matter how dark the night gets, dawn is always on the horizon. The second coming of Jesus is a beacon of hope for those lost in the wilderness, a refuge for the weary, and a promise of a new world free from pain, suffering and death. It's a world where love reigns supreme, where peace is not just a dream, but a reality, and where joy is the air we breathe. In the grand scheme of cosmic events, the second coming of Jesus is the climax of a divine drama that has been unfolding since the dawn of time. It's the moment when God's grand plan for humanity will finally come to fruition. The second coming of Jesus isn't a doomsday prophecy, but a promise of a new beginning. How then, should we prepare ourselves for this monumental event? In the face of such an awe-inspiring event, the end of time as we know it and the second coming of Jesus Christ, it's natural to ask how we might ready ourselves. How do we prepare to meet the divine to stand before the Savior? The answer is both simple and profound. 
We prepare through spiritual readiness, faith, love, and good deeds. Spiritual readiness is not about having all the answers, but about being open to the mysteries of the divine. It's about seeking God in moments of silence, in the beauty of nature, in the quiet stirrings of our own hearts. It's about making space in our lives for prayer and reflection, for gratitude and forgiveness, for compassion and service. Faith is another cornerstone of our preparation. It is not a blind acceptance, but an active engagement with the divine. It's a journey of trust, where we step into the unknown, guided by the light of God's love. It's about believing in the promise of Jesus that he will come again, and trusting in his word that he is preparing a place for us. Love, the third pillar of preparation, is not just a feeling but a way of being. It's about seeing the divine in others and treating them with kindness and respect. It's about extending a hand to those in need, about spreading joy and peace wherever we go. Love, as Jesus taught us, is the greatest commandment and the surest path to God. And finally, good deeds. These are the tangible expressions of our faith and love. They are acts of kindness, generosity, and service that make a difference in the world. They are our way of saying yes to God's call of living out our faith in practical and meaningful ways. Being prepared is not about fear but about embracing the promise of a new life with Jesus Christ. It's about filling our hearts with love, our minds with faith, and our lives with good deeds. So let us prepare not with trepidation but with anticipation for the second coming of Jesus Christ. The end of time and the second coming of Jesus Christ may seem like distant events, but they hold profound implications for our lives today. We've journeyed through the signs of the end times, unveiling the mystique surrounding the return of our Savior. We've explored what it means to be prepared, to be ready for the call. It's not merely about anticipation but about living a life of purpose, love, and spiritual readiness. All these signs, all these preparations, they aren't meant to instill fear or anxiety, quite the opposite. They are a call to peace, a call to unity, a call to love. A reminder that even in times of tumult, there's a divine plan, a purpose that transcends our understanding. In all of this, let's not forget the essence of our journey. It's about embracing the love of Christ, embodying his teachings, and sharing his message of hope with the world. Remember the end of time is not the end of everything but a transition to a new beginning with Jesus Christ at its center. Have you ever pondered over what the end of time might look like? It's a question that has intrigued humanity for centuries, sparking countless theories and beliefs, from the fiery apocalypse depicted in ancient scriptures, to the more modern interpretations of a world consumed by its own technological advancement. The concept of the end of time is as diverse as it is fascinating. One belief that has stood the test of time is the second coming of Jesus Christ. It's a concept deeply rooted in Christian theology, a promise of hope and redemption amidst chaos and despair. Yet it's shrouded in mystery, filled with signs and symbols that have baffled scholars and believers alike. What does the second coming truly mean? How would we recognize it and more importantly, how should we prepare for it? These are questions that demand contemplation and understanding. So, let's journey together to understand the signs and prepare ourselves for the second coming of Jesus. The signs of the end times are not a mystery, they are documented in the Holy Scriptures. As we navigate through the corridors of time, it's essential to understand the signs foretold in the Bible. One of these signs is the surge of lawlessness. The world around us seems to be spiraling into chaos with crime and corruption becoming more prevalent. It's as if we're witnessing the prophecy unfold where it was said in Matthew 24 12 that, because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. And speaking of love growing cold, we observe a chilling trend of indifference and hostility replacing compassion and